Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name's Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time I'm going to show you how to use Active Directory to authenticate Cisco ASA VPN users with Radius. Uh, this is a companion to Chapter 8 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy, it's available through the usual online resellers or through soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Our ASA software version is 9.11, although the procedures I'm going to show you are fundamentally unchanged for several versions back, so it should work with even earlier versions. may have to make a few minor adjustments in syntax, but nothing you can't figure out. Here's our network diagram for the exercise. You'll need a, uh, an Active Directory server, and actually you could use any RADIUS server with what I'm going to show you, but we're going to do this with Active Directory. Um, and you'll need a management workstation connected to the ASA using a console cable because everything I'm going to show you is going to be done in the command line interface. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm not hung up on doing things in the command line interface or in the GUI. I'm just interested in doing things the easiest way possible. And I find it easier to do these particular procedures in the command line. Others may be in the GUI. So uh, again, I just choose things based on what's easiest for me and uh, presumably for you as well. You'll also need a VPN client connected to the outside of the ASA. And optionally, you may want to have internet access, but it's certainly not required to follow along on the video. More specific equipment software requirements. A Cisco ASA security appliance with a base license and a remote access VPN already configured. We're simply going to add the RADIUS authentication to the existing remote access VPN. You'll need a computer serving as a management workstation and a computer serving as a VPN client. The one I'm using runs Windows 8 and the AnyConnect client that we're using uh, is supported on Windows Vista 7 or 8, although Cisco has other clients for other operating systems. So if you're using Linux or an earlier version of Windows or Mac or Unix, uh, there's clients available for you. You'll also need a computer running Microsoft Active Directory and Radius. Um, and on Windows Server 2012, that's the network policy and access server. I'm not going to show you how to configure it in this video, but we do have another video that shows you how to set that up. So uh, this video assumes that you already have that configured. You'll need a console cable connected to the serial port on the management workstation and to the console port on the ASA, and then some terminal emulation software such as PuTTY or whatever you prefer to use. Here are prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco ASA security appliance and an Active Directory administrator user account and password. A summary of the steps. Pretty much the same as setting it up for, say, LDAP or Kerberos. You'll create a AAA server group, configure the group for RADIUS authentication, and add the authentication server group to the appropriate VPN users tunnel group. So not a lot of steps, pretty straightforward. Really, the, the most challenging part of this is configuring the Windows Server 2012 box, and as I mentioned, that's in a different video. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. So let's do the demo. Now, you can see we're logged on to the ASA in its console in privilege mode, and we need to get to global configuration mode. So we'll use the configure terminal command, abbreviating it, conf space T. And now we're in global configuration mode. We need to configure our AAA server group. So we're going to use the command AAA-server. Then we need to create a name for the server group. And as you know from watching other videos, if you have, I like to use names that are descriptive that I can see in a configuration immediately and know what they're all about. So I like to put them in all caps and use a descriptive name. We're going to make this one RADIUS SERVERS. So again, in all caps. Oops. And uh, now we need to specify the protocol. And we're going to specify RADIUS, but I thought I'd show you the others that are available. So here's a question mark just so you can see there's several others that are available. And we have videos for many of them, uh, actually most of them. Uh, but we're going to use RADIUS on this, so RADIUS. Now we need to tell the uh, ASA where the RADIUS server is located. So we're, again, we're going to use a AAA server command, AAA-server. RADIUS servers, and we need to tell the ASA which interface the RADIUS server is connected to, so we'll say inside, and then host 
input its IP address, which in our case is 192.168.101.2. Yours probably would be different, but that's the one we're using. Now, I need to uh, also configure the pre-shared key on the radio server. It's uh, configured as a shared secret here. It's called a key. This is just the machine-to-machine -machine authentication, and it has to match. So key, and the pre-shared key that I'm using is p at ss5678. Now we're ready to give it a test. So uh, let's uh, come out of this and use the test command to test our authentication. So we'll do test aaa-server authentication radius servers host and put in the IP address of the server that we want to test, which is 192.168.101.2. Username that we're going to use is user01. This is a user account in Active Directory that I've already configured. And password, we have to specify user01's password, which is p at ss1234. And we'll hit enter and see what happens. So it's testing it and success. So we know that we've got the radius server configured correctly, and we know that the ASA is talking to the radius server, but we still haven't configured VPN authentication, so we've got to do that with a tunnel group. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this video assumes that you already have a VPN setup, an AnyConnect VPN setup on the ASA. So there's going to be tunnel groups already in existence, and we can see that with a command show run tunnel. It'll show us our existing tunnel groups. So we just need to go in and modify the general attributes of the tunnel group that I've got. The one that I'm using is called account reps NA. I'll show you a little trick with um, putty. Let's go back into configuration mode, config T. And now I'm going to take my mouse, and I'm just going to grab this line with my mouse, like that. And I'm going to right click, and it will automatically paste whatever I've selected in at the prompt saves me from doing a lot of typing, and the way I type saves me a lot of fat fingering and retyping. Now all I need to do is configure the authentication server group. So I'm going to use the command authentication dash server dash group. This is the same group that I configured up above. So it's going to be radius servers. And then as a fallback, oops, I need to put an S there. As a fallback, I'm going to put in local. And what this means is that if the ASA can't reach the radius server for whatever reason, network's down, the server's down, then it will fall back to local authentication. And most of the time you're going to want to do this. I'd say all the time, but there's probably some really high security situations where maybe you don't want to do that. But most of the time, this will allow you to authenticate if you can't reach the radio server. Now, it's important to note that this doesn't mean that if your authentication is denied on the radio server that it falls back to local. That's not what it means. It means that if there is no connectivity to the radio server, then it will use local authentication. So at least you can get in if you need to. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And we should be ready to give it a try. So let's open up our AnyConnect client, which I have pre-configured with the fully qualified domain name of the ASA. So that'll match the certificate on the ASA. We'll go ahead and click Connect. And it's asking us for a username and password. The username's already in there because we've been testing this, obviously, before recording the video. But let's put in the password, p at ss1234, and hit OK. It's establishing the VPN, activating the adapter, and as you can see down in the lower right-hand corner, we are now connected. So pretty simple once you get it set up on the radio server. The radio server is really the more difficult part of this, and we have a separate video for how to do that. Um, if you'd like to uh, check out other resources, we have them on our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. Uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. Follow us on Facebook. Please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or Google+. 
If you'd like more videos, uh, you can subscribe and get notification whenever we add new ones, which is about once a week, sometimes more often, sometimes occasionally less, at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy. It's available at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time. <laughs>